Okay, now we want to talk about the brain. Um, there are three basic parts of the brain that you need to know. First, you have all this little curly kind of convoluted area that goes on, along the front and the back. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> and that's called the cerebrum. And these models are terrible. They fall apart all the time. So be glad you're taking it online and you don't have to look at it. But you have the cerebrum, which is this curly part. Now everything's gotten out of whack. And then you have this kind of brown layered section in the back here. That's known as the cerebellum. Ah. And all right, we're going to skip this. Right we'll go to this guy right here. Okay. So you have this the cerebrum. This is just cerebrum. like we do it in lab yeah. for real. You have the cerebrum, which is all this little convoluted curly part here. Um, and this is your thinking part of your brain. This is the conscious part of your brain where you're making decisions and, uh, you know, feelings, thoughts, sending out information. Then you have the cerebellum. The cerebellum is this kind of layered uh, part of the brain, and that's on the posterior side, so it sits in your head like this. Um, the cerebellum is involved with coordinating motor movements and different things like that. And then finally, you have this part in front of the cerebellum, but underneath the cerebrum, which is known as the brain stem. And the brain stem has all your just vegetative functions, things like it's got a region that, uh, a cardiovascular uh, region that tells your heart to beat. It's got a, a breathing center and stuff like that. So you can be alive and have a heartbeat and uh, be breathing and stuff like that, but you can be brain dead, which means none of this is working. So none of your neurons are making their connections and you've had some problems up here. So the brain stem just has the basic vegetative functions. The cerebellum kind of coordinates motor movement and then the cerebrum is all your thinking and you've got sensory areas and motor areas and processing areas and different things like that. So those are the three main parts. Um, let's start with the cere cerebrum first. It's divided into two hemispheres. You see this big line going down the center. That's not just where the model's been cracked in half. You literally have a, a, a kind of dividing line and you have what's known as the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemisphere. And so you have your right hemisphere and your left ear hemisphere. Your teacher will probably tell you about right brain, left brain people. That's what they're talking about, these cerebral hemispheres. Remember, it's the dura mater that comes in here and forms this kind of um, division between the two. Now, the two hemispheres are actually connected together. So if I open this up, if I can do it without making a mess here, um, you can see that there's a cord of fibers here known as the corpus callosum. And that connects the two cerebral hemispheres together. If you look at it on uh, this model right here, you can see there's the corpus callosum right there. So that's just kind of the, the, the point of crossover between the right and left cerebral hemispheres. Um, then you have four different lobes of the cerebrum. And if you know your bones, you know your lobes. You've got the frontal lobes, you've got the parietal lobes, you've got the occipital lobes, and then you've got this little temporal lobe hanging off right here. So it just follows the same way that your bones do. So you have frontal right there, two frontal lobes, two parietal lobes, two occipital lobes, and then the two temporal lobes. You also have um, some bumps and uh, valleys, kind of just up and down little marks here, and I'm going to put this brain back together and kind of show you these. If I can get it together, it's not working. But see how you have all the little hills and valleys? These little hills are called gyri. That's the plural. One would be called a gyrus. And then these little valleys here are called sulci. And you have all this surface area here created by making all these little bumps and valleys. And that creates more area for more uh, neurons to make connections. And so the more surface area you have, the more um, activity you can have in your brain. What am I trying to say? We'll just leave it at that. Brain power. That's brain power, yeah. It just gives you more brain power by having more of this... Uh, these little convolutions, it just gives you more ability to do things. Einstein had more folds than a normal brain. Yes, Einstein had more parietal, uh, his, his gyri and sulci in his parietal area were very deep and pronounced, and they think that might be why he was such a genius. Um, remember, you also have the, what are called fissures. Now, fissures are a little bit different from a sulcus, a fissure is going to be a deeper cut, so there's a couple of main fissures that I want you to know. You've got this main fissure between the right and left cerebral hemisphere known as the longitudinal fissure, so it follows that mid-sagittal line right there. 
and that just separates your two hemispheres. Then to the side, what's the word for to the side? Lateral. You have a lateral fissure, and the lateral fissure is going to separate your temporal lobe right here from your frontal and parietal lobes. So there's your lateral fissure. Then moving around to the back of the brain, you've got what's known as a transverse fissure, and of course it's making that transverse cut there. And the transverse fissure separates your cerebellum from your occipital lobe of your cerebrum. And then you also have a fissure known as the central sulcus or central fissure. And a lot of your models don't show it real well. This model shows it pretty well right here. It goes right in there. So it, the, the main thing with this, and you probably won't have to identify it on your models because it's too hard to see, but this separates a sensory and motor area. Um, and maybe you'll learn more about that in lecture, but don't worry too much about finding that central uh, sulcus or central fissure there. All right. What then, plane does it follow? The frontal or coronal plane would be um, how that, that's cut, and that's kind of how you can see it. So you got longitudinal fissure going down the sagittal plane, then the central sulcus is right there in your coronal plane or frontal plane, um, and then your lateral fissure over here, and then the transverse fissure back here. All right, if you look at the cerebral cortex, if you take apart your brain, and this model's kind of already falling apart, so I'm just going to take it like that and I'm going to open it up. And you can see where you actually have white matter and gray matter. The white matter is this lighter colored area, and that means that you're talking about myelinated uh, fibers that are in here, myelinated axons. Um, this is part of the central nervous system, so these would be tracks. Um, if it's outside of the central nervous system, these myelinated fibers you would call nerves. Um, on the outside of that, you have the gray matter, which is all on the outside there. That's going to be primarily cell bodies of neurons. So remember, your brain is not any bigger than a two-year-old's brain, but it's all these different convolutions and all these gyri and sulci, they make more neuronal connections. So you have neurons synapsing with neurons, and that's how you get more brain power.